Okay, we're going to try and do something different for this video. I used to record these in my car on my cell phone. And this is the first one I'm recording at home in front of the computer. And I'm going to try and do it all in one take so I don't have to so I don't have to edit it all because I was <laughs> deleting a bunch of videos and taking forever to edit them. So this one's called The Golden Goose. There was once a poor man who had three sons. Two of these thought themselves very clever. They laughed at their youngest brother and called him Dumbling. One day the father told his eldest son to go out into the forest and cut wood. The mother gave him cake and wine to take with him for his dinner. On the way to the forest he met an old man dressed all in gray. Give me cake from your basket and a drink from your bottle, said the old man. I am hungry and thirsty. But the youth said, What? Give you my cake and wine? I have no more than I want myself. With these words he went on into the forest. He had hardly begun to cut when his axe slipped and hurt his foot. Home he went groaning with pain. On the way the gray man passed him and smiled. Next day the father said to his second son, Take the axe and go into the forest to cut wood, and do you be more careful than your brother was. His mother gave him also some cake and a bottle of wine. As he entered the woods, the little gray man met him and begged for a piece of cake and a drop of wine. But the second brother answered as rudely as the first, What you ask for I want for myself. I will give you nothing, so out of my way. He left the little old man standing in the road and walked on. Then he began to cut wood, but he had hardly made two strokes when the axe slipped and hurt his leg. Home he limped in great pain. On the way he met the little gray man, who smiled as he passed. Then Dumbling went to his father, and said, Father, let me go and cut wood in the forest. No, said his father, your brothers have both been hurt. You are not so wise as they, and would fare far worse. But Dumbling begged so hard that at last his father said, Go. If you go, if you <clears throat> go then. If you go, you must. No doubt you will get hurt or killed, but that will be your own fault. His mother gave him a crust of bread and a bottle of sour milk for his dinner. He went on singing a merry song until he reached the woods. There the little gray man met him and said, Give me a piece of your bread and a drink of your milk. I am hungry and thirsty. Alas, said Dumbling, my bread is only a stale crust and my milk is sour. But if you are as hungry and thirsty as I am, even they will taste good. Let us sit down here and eat and drink together. They sat down, and Dumbling opened his basket. Lo, the bread and milk were changed into cake and wine of the best. They both ate their fill. Then the little gray man said, Because you are kind-hearted, and share with me your food and drink, I will give you good luck. There stands an old tree. Cut it down and take what you find at the root. Then he went away. Dumbling set to work, and soon cut down the tree. It was hollow, and at the root was a goose with feathers of pure gold. He took it in his arms, as it was now late. Instead of heading home, he went to an inn to pass the night. The landlord had three daughters, who looked at the goose with longing eyes. Each said to herself, What beautiful golden feathers! I should like to have a few. When Dumbling went out of the room, the eldest daughter said, Now is my time. She went up to the bird and took hold of its right wing, but she could not pull out a feather, nor could she take her hand away. Soon the second daughter came in and said, I too will have some of these golden feathers. As she put out her hand to the bird, she touched her sister's dress, then she too stuck fast. Try as they would, neither could get free. Now in came the third sister. Keep away, keep away, screamed the other two. Oh, do not come near the golden goose. But she could see no reason for their words, since they were there. Why should she keep away? Did they wish to take all the golden feathers and leave her none? She made a spring forward. She touched her second sister's hand, put out to. She touched her sister's, her second sister's hand, 
put out to stop her. She too stuck fast, and there stood the three without power to move. In the morning, Dumbling took his goose in his arm and started homeward. He did not turn to look at the three girls who had followed him. As he walked quickly, they had to run. Now he turned to the right. To the right they went. Now he changed his goose to the left arm, and to the left they whirled. They had not gone far in this strange way when they met the parson. Shame on you, bold girls, he cries. Why do you run after this young man? Go home, all of you. He put his hand on the youngest to pull her back, but he had no power to take it away. Like the others, he had to follow the golden goose. Just then the clerk came out of the church door. He saw the parson running behind the girls, and he cried, Sir, sir, what are you doing? At the, heel of these at the heels of those silly girls, come back, come back. The people are waiting for you at the church. As the parson did not stop, he ran after and caught hold of him. His hand stuck fast like the others, and now there were five trotting along, one behind the other. On the road they met two farmers with hoes on their shoulders. Come and get me loose, come and get me loose, cried the clerk, dancing up and down. They came, but they too stuck fast and had to follow. On went Dumbling with his golden goose and the seven trotting on behind. After a while they came to a great city. Here lived a king who had only one child. A daughter, she was so sad and solemn that she had never been known to laugh. This was such a grief to the king that he said, Anyone who can make the princess laugh shall have her for his wife, and have half of my kingdom besides. Now Dumbling drew near the king's palace, with, with the seven following at his heels. The goose was squawking, the girls were crying and laughing, the parson was groaning, the clerk was scolding, and the farmers were bawling. Straight in a row they trot. They trotted behind, Dumbling. He moved the goose, and they whirled about like the tail of a comet. It was such a strange sight that the princess began to laugh, and she laughed until the tears came, and she had to hold her sides. And so Dumbling had the princess for his bride, and half of the kingdom for his own.